Good morning. This is Friday. Good Friday, as the Christian world likes to call it. But we, as um, astute Bible students, know that it was on a Thursday. A lot of people will say it doesn't matter, Thursday or Friday, but actually it does. God says we are to rightly divide the word of truth, and as we learn the truth, we must humble ourselves into the notion that sometimes we learn things wrong, we might teach them wrong, and when we know better, we need to acknowledge this before um, God and before the world that we were wrong, and we need to tell it right. We all need to be teachable. If you don't know this, we will get into it later. It is amazing, and you will understand it, and you will know why it matters. So anyway, let's get off of that and just talk a little bit this morning about Messianic Miracles. And if you've never heard of this, this is very important also because this is what turned Jesus around on a very um, instantaneous time um, when the last messianic miracle was performed. The uh, Jews went along with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the um, Herodians, I think is the way you put it, on the idea that um, Jesus had uh, gotten his powers from Beelzebub or Satan and he was performing all these messianic miracles in his power. Uh, the crowd, uh, were, they were weak. They, um, they didn't um, feel strong enough to accept this new way of life. They preferred to stay with their old. to the priesthood in Jerusalem in order to force them to follow through with the commands of Moses in Leviticus 13, 14. From the time the Mosaic law was completed, there was no record of any Jew who had been healed of leprosy. 
while Miriam was healed of leprosy. This was before <clears throat> the completion of the law. Naaman was healed of leprosy, but he was a Syrian Gentile, not a Jew. From the time the Mosaic Law was completed, there was never a case of any Jew being healed of leprosy. Leprosy was the one disease that was left out of the rabbinic cures. There was no cure whatsoever. On the day that a leper approached the priesthood and said, I was a leper, but now I have been healed. The priesthood was to give an initial offering of two birds. For the next seven days, they were to investigate intensively the situation to determine three things. Was the person really a leper? Second, if he was a real leper, was he really cured of his leprosy? Third, if he was truly cured of his leprosy, what were the circumstances of the healing? If after seven days of investigation, they were firmly convinced that this man had been a leper, had been healed of his leprosy and the circumstances were proper, then on the eighth day, there would be a lengthy series of offerings. <clears throat> the ceremony would then end with the atoning of oil upon the healed leper. According to Luke 5.12, the man was full of leprosy. That means the leprosy was now fully developed and it would not be very long before the leprosy would take this man's life. Jesus deliberately sent this cleansed leopard to the priesthood in order to get the leaders <clears throat> to start investigating his messianic claims and to come to a decision regarding those same claims. God was deliberately setting all of this up in motion. <clears throat> Israel rejected their Messiah. God had this plan and used the sin of his people to accomplish his sovereign will. God works with the sin of his people and does this today. It, it just is fascinating how our will will, our self-will will just work right into God's sovereign will and he will perform his um, ultimate desire. So let's get uh, John the Baptist in on this. How did John know that Jesus was truly the one. In Matthew 9, Jesus healed a paralytic, two blind men and a mute man. Thematically, these miracles are important because the Old Testament highlights the healing of the lame, the blind, and the mute as signs by which to recognize the promised Messiah. These Pharisees knew this. They were well acquainted with what to look for, but they didn't... Uh, they didn't want Jesus. He wasn't, um, he wasn't the kind of Messiah they wanted. They needed someone who would uh, exalt them and uh, put them in their proper kingly state in the kingdom. Um, in Luke 7, 19 through 22, summoning two of his disciples, John the Baptist, sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the expected one, or do we look for someone else? When the men came to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you to ask, Are you the expected one, or do we look for someone else? And Jesus answered and said to them, Go and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, the leopards, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and that is Isaiah 35. 5 and 6. John knew the scriptures and was convinced on this account. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we, uh, we come to you uh, on the threshold of this wonderful day that we celebrate for you, the death, burial, and resurrection of your son, Jesus, Father. Help us to be able to uh, recognize all that this entails and to be able to, uh, to enjoy the day with our loved ones as, as far and as much as we can, Father. We also um, <clears throat> bring it back, Father, to this, um, to this disease that uh, we know you have a plan for. But Father, we, we desire that it be um, 
be lifted from us, Jesus. We ask that you, uh, we make this time, that you make this time short, Father. Bless us, and uh, Father, we give you all the glory for everything, Jesus. Father, God in heaven, Holy Spirit, we love you. These things we ask in the name of your precious Son, Jesus. Amen.